Hello, and welcome to Dish Granted. I'm your host and aspiring home cook, Stephen Lim, and I've had the opportunity to try some of the most extravagant, expensive, delicious meals all around the world. But on this show, I'll be attempting to give my friends a little taste of that same luxury. With no limit to how much I can spend, I'll have 24 hours to create a dish beyond their wildest dreams. This is Dish Granted. I have a good feeling about today. That's why I changed the wording of the beginning, if you noticed, from amateur home cook to aspiring home cook. Go big. Go big or go home. And you know what? When you're me, you go big and you go home. Cause I'm at home right now. This is my home. This is my kitchen. What's up? Let's go. Today, the special guest whose dish I will grant is none other than my co-founder and close friend, Ryan Bergara. Oh man, do I love me some Ryan Bergara. When I first moved to LA, I had a really hard time adjusting. But when I met Ryan at BuzzFeed, he was actually one of the first people who asked me to hang out with him. He invited me to play in his basketball league, grab Korean barbecue with his friends, and checked in on me as I was going through a breakup. For this episode, I just wanted to say thank you to Ryan for welcoming me to LA with such open arms. So let's talk to Ryan and see what dish he's wishing for today. You are going to be making for me today Tacos. Tacos! Me and my family would always go to the taco truck growing up. It was something that my mom and I in particular would drive out to the truck. We would order for the family. We'd take back 30 to 40 tacos back to our family of four, and we would just destroy them. Tell me, what are your favorite kind of tacos? My favorite tacos are El Pastor tacos. I know some people like the El Pastor tacos with the pineapple slices. Not the biggest fan of that, because I just think they clash. You like it simple. I do like that. I also like spice. I usually will get both both red and green salsa. Okay, okay, got it. Ryan, I know that you love to eat good food, but I also know that you like to eat what is quote unquote garbage food. I don't limit myself or my body to deliciousness. And sometimes deliciousness comes in the form of cheesy gordita crunches from Taco Bell. But other times it could come in the form of a five course meal at a Michelin star restaurant. Have you ever had a fancy taco before? Yeah, I've had some elevated tacos before. And to be quite honest, I almost always wish I was just eating a street taco. <laughs> what would that taco have to do for you for you to be like, you know what, Steven? That was worth it. It really does come down to the quality of the El Pastor usually because the rest of the ingredients is it's pretty simple. There's gonna be something you're gonna have to do to mix up the profile to add something more to the taco than just onions and cilantro. So I'm curious what you're gonna do. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to outdo your favorite taco truck, but I will try my best to grant your dish. I hope so. I'm a tough critic. I will see you in 24 hours, my friend. I look forward Ta -ta. to it. Ta-ta. All right. That was a lot. What are we gonna do here? I think the mistake I made last episode was that I was not ambitious enough. But for this episode, I'm just gonna go for it all. So the spectrum of tacos in this world, you have like Americanized tacos from Taco Bell, ranging all the way to street taco. What if I combine them together into this wacky Taco Bell-esque taco. I need to find out what's inside the cheesy gordita crunch. Why don't we just go to Taco Bell and get that? I don't think I've ever had the cheesy gordita crunch before. Have you? Is it good? <sighs> Who thought of this? There's an outside shell, and then this is a Dorito in a hard shell. We have some sort of probably cheddar cheese, yeah, lettuce, and then Taco Bell beef. And then there seems to be some sort of creamy sauce that I don't know what it is. I mean, I, I mean it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> <gasps> I know what I'm gonna do. Wagyu Doritos Locos Cheesy Gordita Crunch Taco. Sounds pretty good. We have a flour tortilla. And then inside that we have the Doritos hard shell. Oh, you know what though? It's actually glued together with a layer of cheese. So we're just gonna get a bunch of cheeses and blend them together for this glue. And then inside, what if we do Wagyu? Okay, I love this so far. Lettuce and then the cheese on top. That's taco number one. But taco number two, this is where I'm gonna explode his mind. It's gonna be an Al Pastor Doritos Locos Gordita Crunch. Same shell. Al Pastor meat. Let's get some higher quality Berkshire pork. I can't draw, guys, I'm sorry. And then he said cilantro and onions, right? That's it. Oh, and then sauce. The length we go for our friends. I think he's gonna like it. This will be in Ryan's mouth in 24 hours. Let's go shopping. I 
found a great Doritos Locos shell recipe that you can make at home via healthy junk food. So we're gonna make those, and if it, we mess this up, I'm blaming you guys. Before we move on though, a quick word from our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. You can take a class on illustration, video editing, or music. Or if you're like me, I'm always interested in discovering new techniques on how to film food. I actually just finished taking the class on how to capture bright and airy pancakes. And since I'm shooting Dish Granted right here in my kitchen, I was able to learn from Tabitha Park on creative ways to use natural light for food videography. And Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. And now, back to tacos. Okay, so first thing we gotta do is throw in the Doritos. Let's pulse this for a little bit. Then we need one cup of masa for the corn tortilla. So in this mixture right now, we have masa, a teaspoon of chili powder, paprika, and salt, and Doritos. Okay, yeah, it's thickening up a little bit now. Little dough balls. This smells like Taco Bell already. Do you smell that? This is actually a lot simpler than I thought it was gonna be. All right, so we have a ball now, and we have to let it rest for 30 minutes, so. This is where it's gonna be a little complicated. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna press it in this tortilla presser. I'm gonna griddle it on the kamal for 30 seconds each side, and I'm gonna deep fry it in the oil which I have burning here. One trick that I'm learning, to use wax paper, a plastic bag, just so it doesn't stick to your press. Oh no! It started to crack. This is truly my nightmare. Do you see the cracks, Tony? I hate dough. I hate dough. I hate it, I hate it, I hate you. Dough, dough, dough! No! No! It's only the first one, Steven. Go round two, baby. Let's do this. You're doing great, Steven. Thank you, Tony. Oh, no, no, no! <laughs> How do you flip it? Put your hand. <laughs> no! Jeez! Mamma mia! No! <laughs> Why is this so hard? All right, let's try this one last time. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take it off. Let's go. Oh. This feels like a video game, and I got past the first level, past the second level, I'm on the third level right now. Now I have to lay this on here without cracking. Not feeling great about this part. Uh-oh. That's a surprise, Tony. Why is it surprised? All right, going to the deep fryer. Ooh, that's gonna be a good one. I always say that, and then I hate myself for saying it, but I think we did it. Ta-da! <laughs> Oh, yeah, dog. Perfect. I could eat this all day. That's damn good. You got it right, congrats. We have in this box $1,600 of Wagyu product. <laughs> what are we doing with this show? Oh, look at that. I am not hamming it up for camera, haha, <laughs> ham. That looks like the Swiss Alps. You can see Chloe Kim snowboarding through that. It's the drunken Wagyu Takamori, and it's specially fed with sake mash. So that's the mash that comes from sake when sake is made, and they feed it to the cows. This is exciting. I'm very curious how much this cost. Whoa. This right here is two ounces of meat. 40 bucks. 40 dollars. Mm. Brittany just went like this. I love this show. Like I'm cooking Wagyu. That's insane. They say leave it to the professionals, but I get to do it. I, I, get, to tr I get to make this. I think that's done. Woo-wee! Mm. <laughs> Literally melts. This is the test if it's gonna go well with the texture and taste of a Dorito. Woo! 
Has anybody else ever put Wagyu on a Dorito before? In the history of life. I think this is the first time. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's ripe. That's like as soft as Taco Bell meat. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. We did it. All right, I'm gonna make a marinade now for the Alpa store. I found this recipe from Google Foods on YouTube. Looks amazing, not gonna lie. So we're going with it. And here's everything we need for it. Starting with the juices that we made. Paio peppers, pineapple juice. I know he doesn't like pineapple, but we're sneaking in there. Throw in the onions and the garlic. The spices that we have here. Don't breathe it in like I just did. Oh! Whoa! And now we're gonna butcher our meat. We slice these in one inch increments. Where is my butcher knife? Yeah, there you go. Nope, it didn't do anything. <laughs> oh, is there like a automatic pork butt cutter? Maybe use your other knife? Yeah. Let's try this. There we go, you're right, this is a knife. Wow, this is insane. So this is what happens in Alpha Store, huh? They like take a pork butt and deconstruct it so that they can marinate the very insides of it and then cook it for like three hours. Oh, dude, I'm tired. I can't believe I'm doing all this for Ryan. So the marinade is in there, it's pretty well incorporated, and I'm very excited to see the final product. So we've nailed down the hard shell, we've nailed down the beef. The only thing that I need to figure out, how to make this gordita, because it has such a pleasing softness to the dough that really just is maybe the key to this entire dish. I actually know just the right person who can help me with this. His name is Josh, he's the mythical chef, as some of you may know, and he knows his stuff. Josh, thank you so much for your time. I am absolutely honored. I broke out the chef jacket just for you. Appreciate it, and the set deck. Did you decorate that just for this call? Yes, I did actually. I also have to stay here till like 9 p.m. to take it down, so thanks for that. That's how much this means to me. <laughs> anyway, I'm running out of time, Josh, so I, I really need your help. I'm making a taco for my friend who loves Al Pastor tacos, but he also really loves Taco Bell. And so I have decided to make that taco shell for him. Okay. Okay. Which is the gordita and then the cheese and then the hard shell, right? Yeah, so the gordita shell, which is not actually a gordita. So a gordita in real Mexican cuisine, it literally means like little fat thing, right? But a gordita, I believe is from the state of Durango, Mexico. And it's like this kind of very thick, dense masa that is cooked and then stuffed with things. But that has nothing to do with what a gordita is at Taco Bell. This is exactly why I called you. You like read my mind. Okay, so give me an easy recipe that I can do to put this together. Honestly, dude, it's pretty much non bread. It's weird to say that because obviously non is from India and like Taco Bell is from San Bernardino, California. <laughs> but like, well, I would use a simple non bread recipe, which you may have a little bit of difficulty with because it is typically a yeasted dough. I know, dude, Steven, come on, you're doing it. You're doing it for your friend, man. It's your buddy. You're trying to make the most extravagant meal possible. This is where I get a little confused. The glue between the two shells. How do I make that? That is Taco Bell signature three cheese blend. So that is also what they melt on top of some of their fancier nacho plates. Um, mm -hmm. What those three cheeses are, if I had to guess, Monterey Jack a nice mild or medium cheddar, and then probably Colby, which Colby is essentially cheddar light. Colby is one of the cheeses that they use to melt into American cheese. If you wanted to get a little bit fancy with it, there are yeah. like very good aged versions of those cheeses. And so you just melt them together. Mm -hmm. So what I would probably do is I would get a pan hot, I would put your non-bread gordita down, put the cheese on top of that, and you gotta shove the Doritos Locos taco inside that, and then kind of like how a penguin incubates its young, you gotta kind of do that to the Doritos Locos taco. Like a magic trick. All exactly. And again, this is what Taco Bell employees are doing every single day. That's what confuses me. Fast food labor is skilled labor, man. That's all I'm gonna say, raise the minimum wage. I love it, I agree completely. Has your brilliance been recognized anywhere in the world? No, you're the only one who really appreciates me, I think. <laughs> It was good speaking with you. Thank you for your time. Likewise, man. I'm stoked to see how this goes. Day two. We have a lot to do today. One, prep the Alpa store and bake it in the oven for approximately four hours. Two, we have to prep the non bread. Three, we need to make all the salsa. Four, put all of that together. And that is the part where it's gonna get chaotic. So, I'm ready. This has been marinating overnight. Let's take a look. Ooh, buddy. This is honestly the moment I've been waiting for here. Time to build 
Hot trumpo. So the plan here is to just layer the meat over and over. It's essentially re-marinating itself, and then gonna throw that in the oven for a slow bake. When somebody came up with the Alpa store, they're like, what is the most amount of work we can do possible to maximize flavor? Which is, I think, what this is. Probably our last piece here. Okay, look at that. It's so beautiful. Let's just give me one moment to take a photo. Oh! It's weird because like part of me wants to be like, Ryan, I did this for you. But part of me is like, I actually did this for myself. This was quite the journey in learning how to make al pastor. And I've always wanted to try. So thank you, Ryan, for letting me do this for you. I don't know. Oh, it's heavy. This one for you, Bergara. Gotta oh. give it up to myself, you know, slow clap for Steven. Nobody else wants a slow clap from me. Okay, all right, then to the next one. <laughs> so this recipe brought to us by Josh to do a non bread and I found it on a website called Give Me Some Oven. I am just going to hope and pray that this turns out okay because if it doesn't, we're so screwed. First step is to mix in warm water with honey. One package of active yeast. Give the yeast a quick stir to mix it in with the water. What does that smell? Is that what it smells like? And now we wait for five to 10 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to put this aside and prepare the other stuff. It goes flour, yogurt, salt, baking powder, and egg. This is about to turn into like a beautiful flatbread. How? I don't know. Is it gonna work? I don't know. All right, Brittany, I'm gonna need your help here. So slowly incorporate. I'm gonna mix while you incorporate, okay? Uh, wow, this is hard to mix in. Okay, slow down. Oh no, oh no, it's all plumped. Is that bad? I don't know, I don't know either. <sighs> the egg. Incorporate the egg. Uh, should we buy a mixer or ask my neighbors if they have one? Anybody have a mixer? You will not live rent free in my head, Doe. I will live rent free in your head. <laughs> the things we go through, you take me. Bringing me back. Look at this. I'm freaking Spider-Man here. And we're not going to use flour to knead the dough. We're going to use small amounts of oil by, by dipping our hands into the vegetable oil. Oh. Getting it nice and coated with the oil. That's crazy, okay. Wow. Oh, geez Louise. Monkey C, thank you for your help. And we're going to cover this and set it aside in a warm place for about four hours. Four hours? What did he just say? No, 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 we don't have that kind of time, bro. One hour, we're doing one hour. Whoa, you're a big dough. So we gotta get it until it's golden brown down here. What do you flip? It looks so pretty. All right, let's try it. Wow, this is perfect. We got two hours before Ryan gets here. Let's wrap this baby up. Okay, in the meantime, we're gonna make the salsas, which are pretty simple. I got these recipes from the Use on the Road YouTube channel. She has this like really fun salsa roja and verde. The ingredients that we have for the roja are tomatoes, onions, serrano peppers, cilantro, and lemon salt. For the verde, we're using tomatillo instead of tomato. And also, I think I'm gonna use lime instead of lemon. Mm, nothing more, nothing less. Call it. All right, T, it's been a long day, but gotta have the final touches. We're looking for a Steven Spielberg film on VHS to act as the case for the taco. Just, you know, as a homage to Ryan's greatest interest in idol, Steven Spielberg. Ta-da! Nice. We're at the home stretch here. We're now going to take these Nan flatbreads. Nan? Non? Non? <laughs> Glue them with cheese to our hard shells. Oh, I can already see it. I mean, that's what it's gonna be. The suggestion that we got was to put the naan bread on the pan, put the cheese on top, and then fold it over. How a penguin incubates its young, you gotta kinda do that. Nope, didn't glue in. Hey, it's actually kind of stained. Oh, I cracked it. 
It's okay. I didn't know if I would need this or not, but I have a taco holder. So I think what I need to do is melt the cheese, place the gordita here, and then glue it in. How's that sound? Try that. This is actually a very difficult step, huh? Ow, cheese burn. No, it's not staying up. <laughs> cheese, melt, cheese, melt. Actually, you know what, Brittany, can you come and help me? Ah, oh, I almost broke it. I'm scared to do it together because if we don't go at the exact same time, it's gonna crack. Just take it off. Uh, grab that side. <laughs> it's like we're doing surgery. There we go, let it sit. Okay, now clamp it. Clamp it. Nice. You got it? That's a good one. This is it, this is the one. This is the one. And that is the al pastor. We're running out of time! No! Everything's better. Everything will be okay. It's been the craziest 24 hours of my life. Just hope Ryan likes it. Showtime, baby. Oh, what up? Ryan Bergara, I have a surprise for you. You asked for tacos. Yeah. I delivered. Your dish has been granted. We'll see about that. Take a look. <laughs> Holy shit! That's amazing! Oh wow, you really went all out. You got the full taco truck presentation with the spire here. That's amazing. Oh wow! And you went Dorado on the taco here, on the shell. Like a yeah. fried taco shell. And a Corona! Well, now I know I'm gonna have a good time. That's, I knew that that was gonna sell them over. I present to you the Al Pastor Ritos Locos Cheesy Gordita Crunch. Oh, I didn't even realize the gordita. I got so caught up in the cheesy shell. I do appreciate that. You have really done something great here. And pick up the shell in the case. There's actually something special for you below that. Oh, this is a, <laughs> this is a VHS case of the film Jaws. One of my favorite films of all time. This might be the most thoughtful thing that someone's done for me. Not ever, maybe ever? That's crazy. Let me just actually just sample the pastor on its own. Oh my God, <laughs> it's so good. I'm relieved. <laughs> I would shake your hand if I could. Man, that's really good flavor. It's, it's not too intense and it's not too oily. Mm. It's very funny because if you were like, let's show everyone in the world who makes the best Al Pastor in Los Angeles and then a picture of Steven Lim comes up. <laughs> no, <you didn't. laughs> Do not put my name on that list. There's... This is one of my favorite things too, just load in and up. Get in this uh, gal ready for the ball. Mm. It's really good. It's really, really good. You really nailed the mixture of the textures. The crunch is perfect, and the gordita is perfectly soft and fluffy. I was wondering what you were gonna do to make this more than just a taco. The thought of the gordita crunch didn't even enter my mind. And now that I've had this, I fear I never can go back, because this is truly one of the best things I've ever had in my entire life. He's a little magical food genie. I can't believe it. By the way, we're not done. What? There's more to this? <laughs> Holy shit, man. We're not done. I don't done. know if I deserve this, to be quite honest. You do. I'm going to make you the craziest cheesy gordita crunch you've ever had with the fanciest meat yeah. you've ever tasted. Yeah. My friend, this is drunken wagyu from Japan. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my, look at the marble on that. Dude, you are a goddamn saint. I could kiss you right now. Please don't. Listen to that. It sounds like a round of applause. I love it. Oh my God, dude. I can't, I, I'm so overfilled with joy right now that I can't even really process it. It me is like honestly making me emotional right now. I, it, you know, this year has been so shitty to have an experience like this in this time really is uh, a lot. It's making me very, very happy. This guy at the beginning was like, you're just some truffle boy. Now. I Run. will admit, I am fully eating those words literally now, and I was wrong. I don't think I've ever had uh, this level of meat before, so. So good. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> it's one of the tastiest things I've ever had in my life. Someone needs to experience this besides me. I want to scream from the rooftops. Hey everybody, I'm eating an amazing taco. It's the best day of my life.
Thank you. He said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So do I get a gold star? Yeah, uh, you get your gold star. I mean, what if that's all you get, that's a shame, but if that's the highest honor, then I'd, I'm happy to bestow the gold star upon you. Thank you, thank you. Woo! <laughs> Let's go! And party tonight. This feels wrong. <laughs> he, should, he should be paid. Brian Bagaro's dish has officially been granted. It sure has. And uh, join me next time as we actually develop a dish for my good friend from my old stomping grounds. Andrew Ilnicki.